everybody. Welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica. Today's video is going to be another summer haul video. Today's summer haul is from Amazon and it's in collaboration with Abby from Rooted and Rest. So once you have watched this haul, hop on over and watch hers where she's going to be sharing everything that she got from Amazon Prime Day. Now my haul is going to be a little bit of a mixture. It's things that I intentionally purchased just because I wanted them for back to school things I purchased during the buy two, get the third free sale, as well as things that I purchased during Amazon Prime Day. So it's kind of gonna just be an Amazon smorgasbord of back to school homeschool goodness, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, before I show you all these goodies, I wanted to remind you that each of these summer hauls has a coordinating giveaway that goes with it. Now, last week's was exclusive to Instagram, and this week's is exclusive to you guys here on YouTube. So stay tuned till the end, where there will be a announcement of what the giveaway is gonna be, and there will be two winners. So good luck, you guys. Okay, I am just gonna jump in because the tables and chairs are literally surrounding me with just all kinds of stuff. The first thing I picked up was this fraction flip book. So you have the fraction, the decimal, the percentage, and then a shape. And you can just kind of flip through to try to match them. And I knew I wanted her um, to start experimenting a little bit more with the, like, you know, shape and the, or the decimal and the percentage that match the fraction. And I thought this would be a fun way to do it kind of hands-on. And then you can see it's double-sided so you can go back the other way too. I just thought, you know, anytime there's a hands-on component, she does a lot better with it. And this was a way to do that. Along those same lines, I got the place value flip chart. Now we've had one of these before that only went up to um, thousands. I don't know which direction this goes. Okay, this way. So up to thousands. And I wanted something that went up to um, millions and this does that. So this one will go all the way up and we can, you know, start working with very, very large numbers. She should be pretty good with it, but I just thought it wouldn't hurt to have it because the one that we have does only go up to thousands. So we're going to upgrade to the one that goes up to millions now. Um, most of what I got is books and games, you guys. So I'm going to just try to get the few things that aren't books and games out of the way. I also picked up the Brain Quest fourth grade. This is the trivia card deck. There's normally two trivia card sets in here, a deck one and a deck two. And it just asks questions. Um, each card has questions about science, English, math, miscellaneous, U.S. history, geography, science, English, math, miscellaneous. So they just go over and over and there's questions and answers on them. Um, we have used these for years now. I don't know that we've ever really gone from like the very first card to the very last card, but I like having them on hand. They're really good for car schooling too. She likes to do trivia in the car. They're just a great resource. So I like having those. The other thing I picked up was totally for me and it was because I never realized that Friction did this. These are the Friction Fine Liner markers, pens, whatever you wanna call them. They remind me of a Papermate flare because it's a little bit thicker than your standard um, like ballpoint pen. They are erasable, like all of the friction. And I have these in a set of like 24 with beautiful colors, but I find that my black runs out quicker than anything else and I don't necessarily need to replace all the other colors. And so I found that they now sell a box of 12 just black. So I actually think I bought two boxes of these because they go to gray so quickly or they turn to gray so quickly and they're not that crisp black anymore and i'm weird and anal and wanted them to be crisp black so i bought two boxes of those i also picked up the handwriting without tears was on sale during prime day it was actually a pretty good sale i think it was like 20 or 30 percent off so these are the last two books that we did not own yet um Cursive success and cursive handwriting. I have no idea which one comes first. I don't know which grade levels are which. Um, I'm not forcing her to do them. This is not like curriculum choices stuff. I actually have had the first Handwriting Without Tears book since she was in kindergarten. She cried, I put it away. It ended up in my office on a shelf. We've never pulled it back out until a few months ago when she wanted to do more handwriting. So I pulled it out for her and she has flown through to the two printing books and has now moved up to like cursive kickstart or whatever it is. So she's doing cursive now. So I bought these 
just so I have them on hand. If she chooses to go through them, if she you know gets to that point, they'll be here. If she doesn't, well, then they'll be here for whenever she decides that she wants to pull them off the shelf like she did the printing book. So that is what I got those for. Um, I also picked up the learning resource mental blocks. This was on sale on Prime Day. And to be honest, I've always wanted this, but it's a little pricey or is normally a little pricey in my opinion for what I will pay for a single player game. Um, we just have so many good ones already. I'm not going to pay an astronomical amount for one. And it was at a really good deal. So I picked this up. I love when single player games come in like their own little self-contained thing. It makes them really great for throwing in my purse or car schooling with. And this one did all of that. So it will be really fun to add um, to a lot for logic and critical thinking for her. All right, you guys, this is so hard. I have games on one side of the table and I have a books on the other side of the table and I don't know which ones I want to show you first. Oh, the dilemmas. All right, we're just going to go with books. So like I said, I think every one of these was either purchased during Prime Day or the buy two, get the third free. I'm almost positive it was all buy two, get the third free. Uh, the first book series I found was a book series called Cased Closed. These are super fun. We haven't read them yet, but I'm really excited because they're a pick your path, crack the case. So you get to a certain point in the mystery and then you have a choice of what you're going to do next. And we recently read a few of those Choose Your Adventure and Emily loved them. So I thought she would really like these. Now they're a little bit thick, um, but I know that that's because there's so many different options for, you know, the story paths in them. So I'm hoping she'll read them independently. If she's intimidated by them, we'll read them together. We'll see. So we have Case Close Mystery in the Mansion, which is book one. Case Close Stolen from the Studio, which is book two. And then Case Close Haunting at the Hotel, which is book three. So I will let you guys know what we think about those. They just looked really, really fun. A, another set of books that I picked up, a book series, um, was one that I saw recommended a lot in, I think, the Waldock Way community on Facebook that, you know, people who liked Harry Potter also like this. So I thought you can't go wrong with it because we love Harry Potter. And it was the Books of Elsewhere series. So I got all five of them. So this one is volume one, The Shadows. And then we have... Volume 2, Spellbound. Volume 3, The Second Spy. Volume 4, The Strangers. And Volume 5, Still Life. And... It just dawned on me. I probably should have told you a little bit about it. When 11-year-old Olive moves into the old house on Linden Street, she knows there's something weird about the place. The creepy antique paintings, the three very unusual cats. But the weirdest thing, when Olive finds and puts an old pair of glasses on, she can travel inside the paintings to elsewhere. A sinister world with strange secrets to keep. And soon Olive finds herself caught in a dark and dangerous plan. So they, like I said, just sound fun. We like any kind of magic stuff like that where the characters can go and do things. Um, it sounded also a little bit like the series 68 Rooms that you guys know that we absolutely love. Okay, next book series was Book Scavenger. This one sounded similar to um, kind of like a mix of Mr. Limoncello's Library and Book Wanderers, both of which were huge wins for us not last year. And the character's name is Emily. So 12-year-old Emily is on the move again. Her family is relocating to San Francisco, home of her literary idol, Garrison Griswold, creator of the book Scavenger, a game where books are hidden and clues to find them are revealed through puzzles. But Emily soon learns that Griswold has been attacked, derailing the launch of his epic new game. Then she and her friend James discover an odd clue, which will eventually lead them to a valuable prize. But there are others on the hunt for the special prize, and Emily and James must race to solve the puzzles. So, like I said, main character's name is Emily. It's kind of got that book literary type feel, and we love that. And a little bit of mystery, Emily's going to love them. So the first one is just the book scavenger. The second one is the book scavenger's unbreakable code. 
And the third one is Book Scavenger, the Alcatraz Escape. Again, very excited for those. You guys, I'm gonna have stuff tumble before this video is over. Just telling you now, there's gonna be a loud boom. Okay, the last book series that's like read aloud that I bought was the Mysterious Benedict Society. Now I bought this because it sounded like it would be super fun. And then like the day that it arrived, I saw that Disney Plus was getting the series. And so that makes it a win-win because now we can read and watch. So are you a gifted child looking for special opportunities? When this peculiar ad appears in the newspaper, dozens of children enroll to take a series of mysterious mind bending tests. But in the end, just four very special children will, will succeed. They're challenged to go on a secret mission that only the most intelligent and resourceful children could complete. With their newfound friendship at stake, will they be able to pass the most important test of all? So volume one, The Mysterious Benedict Society, Volume 2 in The Perilous Journey. Volume 3 in The Prisoner's Dilemma. Volume 4 in The Riddle of Ages. And Volume 5 is The Extraordinary Education of Nicholas Benedict. So again, it just seemed like it would be kind of a fun series. And I like finding book series that I feel like our whole family would enjoy, ones that we can all do together. And that seemed like one that would fit that bill. So I love that. Okay, I have another stack of books here. And this is gonna be a little bit of insider information. Just kidding, it's not. She's already published it. But you've heard me talk about the out school book club classes that Emily has been taking and loving with Mary Hannah Wilson. And she has decided to do a semester one and two book club on out school for this coming school year. So I went ahead and purchased, I think all eight of the books for that. So we're already registered for semester one and we will be registered for semester two. It's just not open yet. Uh, but the books that she is going to be doing throughout the year are Crenshaw, Wish Tree, Nim's Island, The Prairie Thief, The Lemonade War, Pax, and Hartwood Hotel, A True Home. Now, I could totally have got these from the library, but when the buy two, get the third one um, free sale happened, most of those were included in it. And I would rather own books that I know Emily's going, going to read throughout the school year so that she doesn't have any pressure or anxiety about having to get done by a certain date, although technically she will because there's a book club, but at least there's not that um, return date of impending doom. So she'll have them. They'll be hers. They'll be on her bookshelf. She can read them whenever she's ready. All right. The very, very last books I have to show you are ones that I've been eyeing for forever. I knew I still had a few years to like have to have them. So I kind of waited and they were on sale. They may even still be on sale. They were like five to seven dollars a piece. I've never seen them that cheap. So I went ahead and got them all because I know I'm going to want them. And it is the complete middle school study guide. And so there are six. This one is the complete middle school study guide to English and language arts. And then we have American history. World History, Science, Math, and Computer Science and Coding. Now I have one more thing to say about these. This is, hang on, it's gonna be backwards for you guys, but I'm gonna hold them up anyway. This company literally made these for me because when I got them all in, the amount of excitement that I had over this was ridiculous. But you guys look, if you put them like that, they're like rainbow. They make Roy G. Biv. Okay, that's ridiculous, but they made me super excited about that. Now let me show you inside one. So it is set up 
in a way that's just kind of fun and graphic and exciting for kids. And then something I really liked is that at the end of each kind of section or chapter, there are these little check your knowledge, like eight to 10 questions. So it goes over a concept, it gives examples of a concept, um, and then it has, you know, like a check your knowledge and the answers to that check your knowledge. And there is just, there's so much in here, like so, so much in here. And there, I haven't been able to find a ton of resources like this for middle school. So I thought I might as well just go ahead and add these to our collection. And I saw when I was checking out that they also have a high school set of these two. So if you have an older kiddo, they have a complete high school study guide set. I'm not sure which all subjects they have, but I know they have high school. So that might be something you want to look into because it's a really great way to kind of use resources and piece your way through and not have to have curriculum if that's not your thing. All right, let's jump into the games. The first one I have is Battleship Outer Space. If you saw the Simply Fun video, you heard me say that we are gonna be doing a very large astronomy unit study and Battleship is one of Emily's favorite games. And this looks much more advanced, a little bit more complicated, but also a lot more fun. Plus I can just see her sitting there with her um, space helmet on playing the game and that just kind of made me giddy thinking about it. So Battleship Outer, Outer Space. Uh, periodic, the game of elements. Again, Kevin requested a few more, you know, science games. So this was one that I picked out for them as well as the Science Ninja Valance. Both of those work with um, chemicals and compounds. And then this isn't a game, but this is also one of his requests during Prime Day. Probably his only request during Prime Day. And it is a rock tumbler. Now we got the hobby edition because I have no clue what we're doing. I didn't even know we needed a rock tumbler, but apparently according to him, we do. So they got a rock tumbler. Okay. Let's see here. Seriously, you guys. All right. Most of these games are either... They're, most of them are really just upgrading games that we already have and that we love, and we're just kind of moving on to the next level. So, Apples to Apples Express. We have Apples to Apples, and we like it, but it's a little cumbersome for just the two of us or three of us. So, I thought maybe we would try Express, which would be like a quicker, um, quicker gameplay and quicker setup, and maybe we would play it more often. At least that's my hope. Mad Libs, the game. You guys know we love Mad Libs, and I think Emily is finally old enough, even though it says 10 plus, to understand and play it. So I decided to add it to our um, resources this year. STEM Family Battle. Now, we actually already played this. We played this just the other day, and I will say it was a lot of fun. It says ages 12 to adult, and I will tell you why. I actually even think... Um, while kids can totally play it, some of the questions, even me and Kevin were like, wait, what? Let me see if I can find one. Um, anyway, I, I'm not going to find it, but like it referred to a floppy disk for technology. It's not all that dated, but some of it is. And so your kid, if they're like as young as Emily, had just no clue what a floppy disk is. She's never even seen one. She has now, but before we played the game, she hadn't. So it is really fun because there's a ton of rabbit trails you can go down when you play it because it's like a trivia based game, but it's a lot of fun type of trivia. You're kind of battling and answering questions and it really was a joy to play that together. And the laughs that we had was hysterical. So there is that one. Um, Millbourne's, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, you guys, but it is a mile game. Whoever gets to a thousand miles first wins. It is a classic racing game. I actually remember playing this as a kid. Um, this and Racco, I have very fond memories of. So when this one went on sale for Prime Day, I grabbed it. Um, I'm not really sure that it really hits any of our goals for fourth grade, but who cares? It was fun and it's nostalgia, so we're just going to call it that. How about that? Uh, read my list. This one kind of, when I read the description, it kind of made me think of Blurt and some of the others that I got from Simply Fun. Um, I want to work more with her on like vocabulary and categories and writing. And so this fit the bill for that because there are list cards and you pull the list out like types of drinks. And for instance, it has 
punch, cola, chocolate milk, lemonade, hot chocolate, grapefruit, juice, and water. And you have to listen to it and guess the category of the, you know, what it is, which is types of drinks. And then the lightning round is you take turns naming things that fall into the specified category, like that aren't listed. For instance, milk, apple juice, coffee. Now I'm going to have her write those possibilities. I talked to you guys before in the last video about the little mini boogie boards that we bought. And I am using those because they're adorable for everything. And she loves them to sneak in some extra writing, which also means spelling. So instead of just yelling those words out, I will be having her write them. So we'll be reading it, talking about vocabulary words, categories, and sneaking in some writing that way. Kind of the same thing with the May the Best List Win listography game. This one has writing built in already. It comes with paper and pencil. Um, you are basically racing to create lists based on a range of topics from geography to pop culture to pirates to pizza. So again, vocabulary, spelling, writing, I'm trying to upgrade a lot of our games to those types of things for language arts so that we're expanding beyond just the typical, um, like, gram like basic grammar and spelling games. And another one that I'm doing that with is grasping grammar. So this has eight, all eight parts of speech in it. A lot of the, I guess, younger games only have like your standard four. And since this had all eight, I wanted to make sure that it was on our shelves so that we could be working with that for grammar. And I think this is the last language arts game. No, it's not you guys, but we're getting close. Word on the street. We have word on the street, Junior. We love it. We play it often. And I thought, I'm not even sure if we're being honest, except I know that word on the street has a few less letters than words on the street junior. Like I know for instance, I'm pretty sure that there's like not a Z, um, but this upgrades the game from the junior one. And I thought it was probably time that we should do that. So that's what we're doing. Uh, word around race to unravel the word. This has these cards that have a whole bunch of letters on them and you are racing to try to figure out what the word is on the card. So again, that one's gonna be a ton of spelling. Um, and I'm sure vocabulary, because I'm sure there's gonna be some words that we'll have to define and talk about. But it's you flip a card and be the first to read the word, you know, by unraveling it. So I thought that would be a really fun one. This one is a very educational one, but again, it's going to be helpful with spelling and it's just called Spelled. Um, it is by EduPress, and these just have like kind of like spelling based trivia questions. I just thought this would be kind of a fun thing to do a few a day. We can maybe put it in our bedtime basket, put it in the car for car schooling. I don't know for what, but it just seemed like a better way for Emily anyway to do spelling than like a typical spelling memorization and checklist. Again, like I said, that's Emily. I'm not saying that everybody should do that. Um, the last few games I have are math games and I really didn't get that many because when I looked at our shelves, we had most of the topics that I wanted us to do this year covered with games between this and the Simply Fun order I placed in Lakeshore Learning. So the ones I picked up are Proof and Adds to Monday, I'm going to say. And both of those are just fun card games, but they extend the math to all four operations. I found that a lot of the things that we had were either addition and subtraction or multiplication and division, or they were like just multiplication. And there wasn't a lot of things that we had on our shelves that did all four operations equally with the exception of prime climb, which has been one of our favorite math games this past year. And I think that's why I think it's because you know, you're doing all of the different operations or you have the ability or option to do all of them. So I wanted to make sure that I added a few games to our game shelves this year that did the same thing. And these two do that. They're just quick card games. So I'm both of them play in less than 15 minutes and I'm always looking for games that we can play and quick and get, you know, a lesson in. And then I believe you guys, I think this is literally the last thing I have to show you. It is, it is called Mathological Liar. It is also by EduPress. Um, these seriously remind me of Odd Squad. Hang on just a second. All right, I already have the third grade ones open, so I'm just gonna show you these. 
um, instead of opening the fourth grade ones. So the way these work is there is four case cards. So like here is the case and you get four cards. The case of the disappearing diamonds. So the card club has a problem. Someone stole the diamonds. They left the rest of the cards, but they took some or all of the diamonds from each deck. Tomorrow is the card club game night and the president of the club needs those diamonds back fast. Who stole the diamonds and how do you know? So each on the back of each of these cards is a person with their explanation of why they are not the diamond thief in this case or um, whatever. Each case has different things. And they have to do the math for each of them and whosoever math is basically a lie or incorrect is the person guilty of that case, whatever it is, they're the, they're the person. So for instance, Lucky Lucy on the back says, I checked a deck too. It used to have 13 diamonds in it and now it has zero. That means someone took zero diamonds from the deck. Well, obviously she's the person because if it had 13, now it has zero. Somebody took zero, there would still be 13. So that math is incorrect. But normally, um, Emily will do willingly, happily, she will do all four of the cards and all four of the problems to figure out who is the person who did whatever it is. She loves them. She even has a little small like flip top, hang on, a little flip top notebook just like they use in Odd Squad because she thinks it's super cool that she is solving math cases like them. She loves that show. So these make math fun for her. So if you have a kiddo who loves Odd Squad, Go pick them up a notebook from the Dollar Tree and then get the Mathological Liar. I think it comes in second, third, fourth, fifth grade. It may even come in sixth. It may come in younger. I know I saw third, fourth, and fifth. Other than that, I don't know, but I'm sure there's other grades in it. But it just makes, you know, math a little bit more fun. So that is everything. That is my Amazon back to school haul. That's pretty much the majority of what I purchased intentionally for this school year. Obviously there's going to be stuff I purchased along the way, but these were the books and the games and the things that I kind of felt were lacking or needed more of in our school for this upcoming homeschool year. And now for the fun part, the giveaway. So I wanted to do a giveaway for you guys that could be worldwide and could be exclusively here on YouTube. So we're going to make this super simple like this video and leave me a comment and you'll be entered for a chance to win a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. And there is going to be two winners. So that means each person will win a hundred dollar Amazon gift card, each of the winners. So that means we're giving away $200 in Amazon. That way you can go on your own back to school haul.